uh, secular and sacred music, which is probably the best way to look at it. Uh, during slavery, the most liberated person was the preacher. Generally, his mobility was pretty flexible mm -hmm. because the preachments were basically from, uh, I can't quote the, the scripture, but there's a uh, section of the Bible that says that the slave should be obedient to the master. Mm -hmm. And from a political standpoint of view, the preacher would devise ways in which to comfort the flock because they were working from what the old folks used to call uh, kin to can't. You ever heard that? No. From the time you can see till the time you can't. <laughs> That's what they used to call it, from kin to can't. And in New Orleans, slavery took on a different kind of, I don't know how to really explain that, because this was kind of an urban community. So there were people who, there were slaves who worked on the docks. And there were also slaves who would come from rural areas because this being a commerce city, uh, those, the slave masters would come in with their slaves to get goods that they needed on their plantations. So <clears throat> quite often the slave who would come in with the master got a chance to, uh, it's sort of like going to town or going to the city and see all of these things. And the more the slaves saw other kinds of activities other than what that plantation had, sometimes they would slip on one of them ships that was going out and still be a slave, but he'd be gone. Well, being aware of that, any of the musics that was associated with the city was preached against. You see? Because they might get out of their place. Precisely. Okay. You see? And it carried over. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not that far away today. How so? Well, there was a, uh, a piano player named Eric Reed who I mean, he's still playing today. And he started playing uh, with our son Winton's band because he had been playing in his church in Los Angeles. And a lot of the sisters got upset when he started playing with Winton's band and told him that. Mm -hmm. Getting out of place. <laughs> you know, and uh, I don't know to, to what degree it is today. I mean, there's a lot of difference in some ministers that they don't have the same feeling. But the thing that I always thought was interesting was that the membership in those churches never felt the same way about the singer. 